I'm Jada Ben Torres. I am a genetic anthropologist. I'm currently at the University uh, of Notre Dame. I've been there for this fall would make eight years, uh, but I will be transitioning to Vanderbilt University in the anthropology department there. Um, my work, I find it very interesting. I have kind of two main areas uh, in which I research. The first area is in the Caribbean. Uh, in, there, in that area, I'm interested in questions of, I guess, both genetic identity, history, what genetics can tell us about uh, the emergence of different populations, so ethnogenesis, as well as the effects of colonization on native uh, Caribbean peoples as well as African and European populations. Uh, I began that work really as a, as a graduate student, and it, and it stems from my own ancestry. My, my family is actually from Trinidad. So in my efforts to learn more about that aspect of my own family history, I kind of took it to a professional level. The other area of research, which I'm trying to get off the ground a bit more, uh, is more in the interface between health and human variation. Uh, in particular, I'm trying to unpack what race means in a biomedical setting. Uh, the way I'm, I'm going about this is to study uh, women's reproductive health. Uh, there's one disease in particular that tends to affect African-American women more, uterine fibroids. So these are just growths in the uterus, and they can have a profound effect on quality of life uh, for, for a lot of women. When you look at the epidemiological literature, you see that for African-American women, race is actually listed as a factor. What does that actually mean in biological terms? Okay, nobody really knows. There's some ideas, but none have been re uh, really well tested. So my goal is to use what I've learned about genetic ancestry from working in the Caribbean uh, to address uh, these questions of what does human variation have to do with, with disease susceptibility and resistance. I actually went to college to become a medical doctor. My dad thought this would be great to have a doctor and I figured, well, I like sciences enough. So that was what I did when I went uh, to college. And then I took organic chemistry. <laughs> and that was the beginning and end of my medical career. Uh, so while I wasn't doing so great in organic chemistry, I was doing fabulous in my anthropology classes. I had great professors, and I was really, really interested in kind of the topic in general. I took a class, it must have been my junior or senior year. Uh, it was human osteology. And for the first time in college, I can remember actually losing time, going into the lab, studying the bones and then looking up and realizing that I missed a meal, completely forgot to eat. I was so engrossed in what I was doing. So I decided that uh, going to graduate school to do forensic anthropology was what I was going to do. And this happened at a time before, you know, those TV shows like Bones made you know, forensic anthropology look, look sexy. I think I'm just amazed at the, the fact that I get to do this. I get to ask questions for a living, ones that I'm actually interested in, and I've got enough you know, support to make, make it happen. Um, what amazes me about my research is, on a professional level, being able to add sort of a new perspective in terms of Caribbean and African American history. I think that's, that's pretty fun. With regard to thinking about human variation, I think there's a potential for me to make a, a large impact in how we describe people and what that means you know, to their health and well-being. I think for a lot of institutions, they need to think a bit more broadly in terms of the sorts of questions that they want to support uh, researchers doing. Um, many underrepresented uh, anthropologists, not all of them, and certainly shouldn't be um, limited to, to what you study, but a lot of people want to study their communities and questions that are of interest to the communities. And this historically may not have been well represented within the field or something that institutions have traditionally supported. I think showing that there's a place for underrepresented communities or people to do their work, to do academically meaningful work uh, and support, supporting it would go a far way in encouraging uh, people from underrepresented groups to join the discipline.